I'm gonna do this thing where I snap. Restart. Oh. Welcome to Blunderbuzz Podcast. We're here. We're in your apartment once again. My apartment's still alive, bunkering down. Yeah, we are all uh, quarantine potting in here. <laughs> yeah, this is our pod. <laughs> this is this is this is. What, did you do? Did you have one of those during the quarant- during the their twenty twenty quarantine podcast? No, a pod like um. I guess you lived at home, but like you know how like in New York City, people in their apartment buildings like became friends and they had they became pods and they just hang out with each other to like reduce exposure but also to get social interaction you know what i'm talking about no no i didn't um i guess i was doing that with my mommy and my daddy <laughs> and my brother and my, my sister sister, sister. Yeah, yeah that's your pod mm-hmm. did you guys sort of lose your minds just hanging out with each other or was it actually like you got to know each other pretty good it actually was a bright spot in my family's history because wow. i remember when everything was shut down and then my mom and dad didn't have to work anymore like they uh they were really happy whoa yeah that was the only time were they getting it's the only time they were they been getting happy. money, huh? Were they getting money? Uh, I think they were getting like, well, my dad was getting unemployment, like nice from the government, and Sick. then my mom, um, you know, she had a small business, so it's like a small business loan, like maybe a PPP small loan. Bu- yeah, she had a PPP loan. Whoa! But like they for just a few days, because that's how long the pandemic lasted in Texas. <laughs> yeah. They were they were kind of happy and right. not stressed, but that was just a blink. Right. And the span of their relationship. Well, the moment comedy was back, you knew you had to go back to work. You know, you saw those comedians posting clips during the pandemic. You remember that? Dude, in Texas, um, people were, like, doing shows and, like, yeah. going to mics. You were doing shows. Uh, <laughs> it's compared, right, can... compared to New York, I got back on the wheel pretty fast. Sure. But compared to Texas, I, I waited a long time. Like two there, weeks? There was a... No, no, no. Like, like, uh, like, months and months. Okay. You know? Nice. And there was one time where I was going to do a show and then I was in the parking lot and then like I got too anxious and I had to cancel. Whoa, because of COVID. Yeah, because I just wow. couldn't, I couldn't bear like getting my family sick so I could do some fucking jokes. Stand up. Yeah. I'd say it's worth it. Parents dying. That's more bits for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can do some shows about dead parents. There's some shows in New York that <laughs> you have to have dead parents. You have to have dead parents. Yeah, I can get on that show. You know, get booked. <laughs> I'll do anything. Get booked. I'll transition. Yeah, you gotta send a five minute tape of your mother's eulogy. <laughs> yeah. Your mother's eulogy. <laughs> the cremation. I have to bring the urn. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out, dude. That'd be fucked. Um, I was gonna say, I have a few thoughts. One, did you ever see Joe Firestone's like stand up special thing? Where she like mm-hmm. teaches old people how to do stand up? No. Okay. There's one part at the very end. The whole like it's, a, it's like a retirement home, and they're doing stand up as like their final show, the class show thing. Like they yeah. took a class, blah blah blah. Right. One lady literally didn't do stand up. She brought pr- like items from her late husband's life, and they were like, it's like clearly this lady is like a hoarder. She's <laughs> like, I have a tissue he used like 15 years ago. What? And a it's tissue? like, yeah, and you're like. Dude, this this lady like needs help. Like her house is probably disgusting. Yeah, she had like his like knee like or his hip replacement. He's like, this is his hip, and it's like this metal thing. Oh my god! And it was like it was like not even funny. I, I don't know if people found it funny. I thought it was like just disturbing. I was like, yo, that this lady needs help. This is fucked up. <laughs> this like made me depressed. <laughs> like <laughs> like death of a loved one messes you up so much that you literally start hoarding every single thing they've ever like interacted with, like a tissue and uh, their hip replacement. Damn. Isn't that crazy? I think I would Fucked. handle death pretty well, actually. Really? Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I think about my cats dying all the time, and I'm like, Your what cat? I? This was my cat's hip. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, I would get tattoos. I would get, like, fucking so many pictures everywhere. Like, it it, it really ruined me. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It'd be so sad. Uh, yeah, I'd be sad, but I'd move on. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the pandemic, you have one panic attack, then you're back to work. (laughs) (laughs) You're back to work doing bits, doing the shows. Um, I had another thought about something. I'm just good at ignoring my feelings. (laughs) So to the point where they're not even recognizable anymore. (laughs) Just like this amorphous thing. Yeah, yeah. Then it bubbles up to anger. I think so. <laughs> I think once it gets channeled through all the filters, it's like everything looks like anger. Do you feel? Do you feel like uh, you have problems feeling? Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. 
That's interesting. That's why I like movies so much. It's like, oh man, I, wow, I get to feel feelings. Yeah, I can. I, I <laughs> you're like an autistic person trying to understand. You're like, oh, this. I understand sadness. <laughs> 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 I get it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you remind me of uh, a coworker of mine. Another coworker of mine. Am I the guy who's clipping toenails on your desk? No, this other guy. He um, <laughs> in the we were in the car the other day because we we're going to play soccer, mm-hmm. and he was like. Yeah, a big problem in my life is I don't feel anything. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're getting real. <laughs> Do you ever like, get a real moment? I guess we talked about this, but we never get a real moment with your coworker, and you're like, that's a little too real. I don't know how to... Do I pry? Do I let it go? What do you do? You know what I mean? Well, I would love to have that conversation because <laughs> my coworkers talk about emails. <laughs> like in their off time, they sure. talk about emails. I know. that's <laughs> you're, ta- you're telling me that. I'm like, that is <laughs> that is pretty depressing. I mean, yeah. Just talk about emails. All Some day. of them are cool. Most of them are cool, but I'm like, the one. <sighs> you can be cool and also just the worst boring person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can just be a boring person but still be chill. Yeah. 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 Like, there's a couple of them that come to mind. Just like, what? Well, what's your home life like? Yeah. Do you think they just like after work they go home? I think they talk about work. Or do you think they like just watch TV and like eat dinner and go to sleep? Yeah. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Damn. Yeah. Some of that part of that's like kind of nice. Sounds kind of nice, right? Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe they're like just fucking out of their minds. Maybe they're just like this these like crazy. I don't want to judge. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to know cuz they never had a real moment with you, you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Tell me your traumas, you know? <laughs> last time you cried. Last time you cried. Last time you, had sex. Last time you nutted. Yeah. Oh, I can't ask that. <laughs> I, I do. So, and this, then I cry. Me and this coworker that I was mentioning uh, we did talk about him dating also. And I was like, uh, I do want to talk about like... Well, after he talked about... Like, well, up. okay, so he said he can't feel anything. What, yeah. would, what would you rather have been talking about that at that moment? Anime? No, I thought it was great. Oh. I, I, I'm I glad he brought it up. I, it, it, it was a moment of like, what direction do I go? I don't know I don't know how... Because you can't... Can you, you don't relate wanna, like, to that? Can you relate to not feeling? Uh, well, it's funny that you say that. I haven't talked to my therapist in like a month and a half because she's she had a baby. Nice. And I feel like I, without talking to her, I feel things really intensely now. Nice. Like no, like not in a bad, like kind of a bad way because I don't have like to, I don't have her to talk to to like even things out. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So everything's just like super intense. I'm like, oh, oh, that was a lot. You're not her little baby anymore. <laughs> you're not your therapist baby no more. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Weirdly, that is how she talks to me. <laughs> She talks to me like a little baby. <laughs> and it works. You're jealous, but no, it is weird. jealous of your therapist's baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit of an Oedipus complex. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. that's with the dad, but you guys know what I mean. Whose tit am I going to suckle from? <laughs> well, she has two. Two tits? Two tits. Oh. She did tell me it was her first baby, so... Yeah, oh. Did that hurt? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was your first baby. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, my feelings are too intense. I'm not an only child anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so your feelings are too intense. What does that feel like? Sometimes I'll just be going through the day and I'll like get emotional. Like I'll like, like start crying. <laughs> like it's like <laughs> really? this is too much, yeah. Man, we're so different. This is new. This is a new thing. This never really happened until recently. I think since I've been talking to a therapist. Oh yeah, and I've this is the longest I've been I've I've gone without talking to her. It's like uh, your therapist has dulled your tolerance for emotions. Now it's like it's too it's too spicy. Well, it's like she she like levels it. She more she like we sort through it. Or she sanded it down. <laughs> yeah, she makes me numb. <laughs> She's like, you feel that? Stop. <laughs> Swallow that, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Let's talk about something cool like emails. <laughs> like your therapist has like caps your emotions, and then mine, if I ever saw one, would have to <laughs> would have to like extract my emotions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I would. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it makes me shudder to think about that. You should try. It's it's a good time. I like going there. I don't know if I I'll had go back, a, I had a bad see. conversation with my dad a couple of days ago. <clears throat> he was just being extra irritating. Sure. And uh, I was with my girlfriend, and she kept like asking me questions and trying to like um, get to the root of the problem. You Your know, girlfriend so she, did, yeah. So she could like support me. So she could know how to support. Right. Me. Like understand the whole thing. But I was getting angry. Like of her asking questions. Uh. Misguidedly, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. done that. I've done that too. Because like I knew 100%. her intentions were good, but I'm yeah, like, you're yeah. like you're bringing up emotions in me, and right. I don't like that. Why are you making me feel? Well, yeah, it's similar. Like you're you're making me think about it more. 
and therefore I'm getting more pissed about it. Yes. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've, I've been in that scenario a lot. Right. Right. Because like, I'm on a hell, but I want to know. But you're, you're, sometimes it's like you can't be too proactive. You gotta like let. You gotta let it. You gotta feel it, and then and then once you're ready to fucking solve the problem, then you can start talking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Because it seems like in that conversation there are two paths. Yeah. And it's like okay, you can either pull out. Of this conversation, <laughs> or you could delve just, a little deeper. Yeah, you can. And then she keep kept it choosing the door of delving a little deeper, delving yeah, a little yeah, deeper yeah. until I. I should have told her I was like, listen, I really we don't want to talk now. about this right now. I'm Which is, I think that's ups- good. I'm gonna get upset. It's helpful. I've been told that. Where it's like, can you I actually don't want to talk about this right now? Yeah. You're asking too many questions. I wasn't mad at her. I just sure. didn't want to explode. Right. Yeah. But you felt yourself exploded. Yeah, I exploded anyways. <laughs> <laughs> just like all over. It was a mess. <laughs> Yeah, we get so many cum rags. No, my dad, my dad, like, uh, <laughs> really irritates you. I was gonna say he means well, but I don't even really know if he means well. <laughs> like, mm. I, I had a, I had a really nice weekend last weekend. I got sure. to tour. I got to travel with Ronnie, right? And we we're doing a bunch of shows, <clears throat> which I think is an achievement. Like, I think a lot of other people, like in stand up, would be really proud of that. Absolutely excited about it. And Absolutely. I, and I was, and I am. Yeah, my dad, like. He's, he goes, so when are you going to have, like, a career of your own? Oh, my God. And I was like, are you fucking, like, <laughs> like this is an achievement. Like, yeah, other yeah, comics, yeah. like, they spend their lives. Get into this. Stand-up and they yeah. don't get to have this experience. Right. You're doing you theaters. Know? That's crazy. Yeah, I get to perform in theaters. Right. And it's like. Uh, it's pretty sick. Yeah, it's, it's special, you yeah. know. And uh, you just sort of, like, poo-pooed on it. And well, you- it made me mad. Well, here's something that happened. You posted that picture of you at the theater. I literally showed Lauren. She goes, that's so cool. And I'm like, it is cool. It is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she thought you were cool. My girlfriend thought you were cool. Oh, man. You stay away from her. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sucks that your dad is like that, though. Like, he doesn't, I feel like he doesn't get stand-up. He doesn't understand. Right? Yeah, he, he doesn't. And I, I can understand that because it's not like, uh, it's not like a common sense thing. Sure. You know, like but, none of it makes sense. But it, T- the the sim the meta the the simile the metaphor is like if you were working a regular job and your parents are like why aren't you CEO yet why aren't you CEO it's like I'm I I'm happy yes. doing I'm, I'm a manager you know what I mean I'm doing right. my best that's what I think that's <laughs> why I'm kind of glad that I just ended up doing my own thing because yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like if I went to law school or did whatever corporate bullshit <laughs> they wanted me to do right it would, never would have been enough no it would have oh, been you're an attorney you're making four hundred thousand dollars a year yeah yeah why don't you partner when why are you gonna you open firm? up your own firm right, right. when are you gonna open why don't you up the supreme court yeah yeah, yeah. when are you gonna op- when are you gonna buy a fucking parking lot so you can rip off you know drivers he's <laughs> okay. like when is this ever gonna <laughs> fucking end so i i just like turned you, into the direction of the do you think he's like swerve. do you think he's very status oriented um or do you think he's yeah. just, this is just how he is? Like, you have to just climb a corp, any sort of ladder. That's just like how life works in his mind. I don't think he's status oriented because he himself is sort of like a degenerate. Well, that's, he's he's living vicariously through you. Yeah, vicarious through me. Yeah, for right, sure. Right, yeah. right, right. But, um, that's so, he's never, does he seem like a guy that who's wasn't like, even the That wasn't even the worst part of the call. <laughs> do you, do you want to get into it? I don't want to be your girlfriend. I don't want to be a bad boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can if you want. I mean, it's a good blunder. He was like, "Welcome to Blunder Buzz Podcast. This is about blunders, flops, mistakes. You know, nah, I, I, I should. It would. I think it would be a betrayal <laughs> of my dad if I went too deep into it. Okay. He was like joking around about some pretty like dirtbag stuff. <laughs> 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 now I'm like just curious on like a curiosity level. You don't have to say it. We can talk about it after. But it's just like, what is it? What is a dirtbag level? Yeah, describe a dirtbag level real quick. Like, what? Give me an example. It doesn't have to be the one that your dad has." But like, what's a dirtbag level in your mind? Like, divorcing my mom so he could marry a Vietnamese <laughs> woman <laughs> for a green card and then get paid seventy thousand dollars, <laughs> and then using that money to buy a house in Vietnam. And I said, "Well, what about mom?" He goes, "Your mom, <laughs> you know." He goes, he goes "Your mom, she's you know. fine." <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! Dude, and then like that is this, insane to say. This was all in 15 minutes, and then right. me and my girlfriend were about to go eat, and I was like, "And I, I don't stand up to my dad at all. Like I just like laugh everything off, and then inside I'm fuming. You're pissed. And then I'm like, I'm like, Dad, I gotta go. I'm about to, I'm about to go eat. And then he goes, uh, "What? You only give me 15 minutes?" 
<laughs> I'm like, dude, in this 15 minutes, like, this somehow you yeah. shit on my dreams and a pretty high achievement. <laughs> your wife, and my mom. You, <laughs> yeah. And you've teased <laughs> abandoning your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know. What else do we have to talk about, really? <laughs> it's like, oh, no, we got, you know, your sister, your brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How so. much I actually hate you. <laughs> we got a lot more to get into. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? That was cathartic. <laughs> <laughs> I should see right now. This. <laughs> this moment where we talked about it for two seconds. Yeah, <laughs> imagine talking about it for an hour. I Man, I don't know if my therapist could break me. I think I would just, I, I would just do it. <laughs> I would do what I do with my dad. I would just suppress everything. No, I think you, you get to a certain off. point where you're like, I am spending money on this. I am wasting money on this. I gotta, I gotta get into it. Oh, that's my. That was my thinking. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I also talked, I used to do, I used to do it three times a week. Three times a week? Yeah, over the pandemic. So psychoanalysis, they want you to do at least three times a week for like a year. What? Because then you you end up building a profile. Well, no, not even that. You, you lose, you lose things to say. Like you, you, uh, what's the word? Uh, You run out of things to say. Mm. So the only thing left is like the deep shit. So you have to talk about that. You know what I mean? Like you, it's like, we talked about your day last, like you talked about, your week yesterday. You know what I mean? Like there's enough, there's nothing, there's not enough to talk about. You have to get it deeper. That's ah. like the whole point. Like they break you down in that way. Yeah. When you run out of stuff and you're paying for every session. So you're just like, fuck, I got to like literally talk about something big. And then they go back to once a week. Bro, you're addicted to therapy. I haven't done it in a <laughs> month and a half. <laughs> okay, okay. And I'm feeling withdrawals. <laughs> I'm literally on the subway. Just like, start, I start crying on the subway for no reason. It's crazy. <laughs> What's wrong, young man? You start <laughs> spilling to this guy? No, I don't even know. I was just like, literally like, I was just sitting there listening to music. And I think the music just got to me. I was just like, man. Whoa, what were you listening is crazy. to? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember sitting there being like, why am I tearing up? Soundtrack to Cars 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our car's breedable. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> um, but anyway, I did want to talk about the election. We completely blundered. Oh <laughs> yeah, that last oh, week. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like I I should make a public apology to uh, the nobody who listened to our podcast. Oh, we got twenty people. Oh okay. <laughs> I man, used to be hundreds. <laughs> I've been glazing Trump for the last year or so because I was confident he would not win again. I thought it was really. Like, yeah, I thought you, I thought we said we we weren't sure. I thought we said we weren't sure it could go either way. I was confident that Trump would lose. Wow! And so that's why I, I, felt, was so, di- I felt different. That's why I was so comfortable being like, "Bro, this guy fucking Sick. rules. This guy's so funny." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not think he was gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's surprising. I had a good feeling that he might have. He might win. Like him winning wasn't surprising to me at I, all. I thought it was like seventy thirty. Really? I thought yeah. it was going to be like really close. Like literally like 55% or something. Like really close stuff. Yeah, no, I I, I didn't see it. I was a, I was an arrogant fool on my liberal this is so high surprising. horse. I think anyone who's won before, you can imagine them winning again. I think that's a very common thing for presidents. Yeah. Like a second term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that is true. <laughs> I like how you apologize to people as if you convince them to vote for Trump. They're like, oh, you know what? Vic makes some good points. He is kind of sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like I was like normalizing him or excusing him. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think I had any effect, but I do feel kind of gross. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because you're like, you're sort of on his side for some things. You're like, I shouldn't be. This guy sucks. He's a yeah. fucking ass. He's a loser. Yeah. And I and I remained hopefully optimistic, which was wrong, even to today. <laughs> <laughs> like I did not think he was gonna lose because I was optimistic that you know we had just moved on. I right. was wrong. Right. And then with the whole Project Twenty Twenty Five stuff, yeah. I really thought that was just like some extreme right wing shit that Trump really had nothing to no, do. Something like kind of real. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I didn't think I was like, well, even if Trump wins, I don't really think he gives a fuck about any of this. And now he's like appointing like the authors of all that to like right. high positions. And uh, man, things might keep getting worse. But hey. I remain hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> well, in four years we can vote again. I'll be another Republican. Yeah, Maybe. I think the I think the first women president will be a Republican. Wow. Okay, that's a good take. I think that's true. To, yeah. Yeah. To get the woman vote. And here's the thing: I think she'll be really hot. I'm not even kidding. I think she'll be like Sarah Sarah Palin. She yeah, she's, she's pretty hot. Kind of get it. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. No, I agree. That probably plays a part in it. For sure. Yeah. Kind of but it's got to be like hot in the way Americans like like a milk yeah. yeah like a blonde like old... big busty <laughs> yes yeah 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 that too yeah 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> funny um i mean kamala she's a looker 
We talked about that in the last pod. Kamala's couldn't, attractive. Couldn't bring you home. But only only to men with culture. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, the coastal elite. <laughs> she's gotta be she's gotta be hot to white women. Oh she's gotta be hot to white blonde women. Yeah, honestly, Hawk Tua. That's who Hawk Tua for president? That's I mean she got seventy five thousand votes. You oh see that? yeah, yeah, yeah. People wrote wrote her. I in. can see it now. War <laughs> Hawk Tua. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> she did, yeah. Invade and spit on <laughs> that thing. Spit on that thing. <laughs> She's like, I've never read. A, I never read a country before. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's stopping her? She's too young. She's like twenty four or something. She's plenty very of time. Plenty, plenty of time. time. Yeah. Start her platform. She's got ten more years of being hot. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> she can do it. Yeah, she can hawk Tua. Hawk Tua to the polls. Hawk Tua to the polls. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Vote Tua. <laughs> Vote Tua. Yeah. So stupid. Um. Anyway. you. I think everyone who listens to this, DM Vic if you accept his apology. If you voted for Trump because of me. It was his fault. And you're not my dad. <laughs> let me know. Do you think your dad voted for him? No. My mom voted for him for sure. Your mom voted for him? 100%. She told me. Why? She, uh, all the stuff that the Republican pundits, like, use, that are, like... The culture war mi- stuff? Yeah, migrants are fucking taking over. They're ruining the economy. Like, all that shit. Ain't she a damn migrant? She is a migrant, but she did it the right way. She got married. <laughs> <laughs> How did your dad become a citizen? He he applied and, and got it. Wow. I think, like, H1 visa first, and then, like, became <clears throat> a... Pre- uh, but my mom actually had a green card for a long time, and then... I think eventually applied for citizenship because once I you see. live here for long enough with a green, green card, they'll just they'll just let you apply. Right? Yeah, my yeah, mom. She's uh, a full fledged American now. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, and you can tell she loves Trump. Vietnamese people love Trump. I'm sure we've talked about it before. Sure. Yeah, but they're like they're like Cubans. They're just extremely anti communist, but right. for good reason. They <laughs> they ruin their lives. Yeah, they yeah. they have like real life experience. Like their childhood right. was. You know, traumatized from what they would say is communism. Right. My my sister told me she texted me. <laughs> she said if Dad keeps posting things about Trump in the group chat, I'm just gonna start posting like Viet Cong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pro Viet Cong. Funny. <laughs> just get that. Uh, what's that? What's that they use? Lemon powder? Lemon? No. What's the bomb? Napalm. Napalm. <laughs> yeah. Lemon powder. No orange. Agent orange. Agent orange. orange yeah. The other citrus. <laughs> <laughs> lemon pepper. Lemon Donald pepper Trump? bombs. <laughs> he's he's got an agent orange tinge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I get half dry rub lemon pepper and the other half <laughs> agent? Orange. orange. <laughs> you know whatever they call it? Asian orange. Asian orange. <laughs> Agent orange chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I should get some Chinese food on the way. Yeah, I think that sounds hungry. good. But uh, yeah, my mom, I think a lot of immigrants who are actual citizens, they uh, yearn for free market and conservatism and they yearn for uh, the American dream, which is what sort of conservatives sell, I feel like. You know? That's what they sell. Yeah. yeah. They know the American dream part for sure. Yeah. I want to like, get rich. Get rich. I want to get rich. That's what it's always been about. Is I want to get rich. Yeah. They they hear tax cuts and they think, oh, that's for me. Yeah. Tax cuts. That's me. I love tax cuts. But it's like, no, no, no. Other people. Richer but than both you. Both parties are fucking corporate shills. They both support <laughs> the free market. It's a political podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah. podcast is. It's the week after an election. Yeah, I'm over it though. I'm on to talk to a uh, talk to. Uh, I listened to a lot of her podcasts this week. Have you listened to any of her? Uh, yeah, episodes? I had to do research on her, and I did listen to it. And here's the thing. Here's the appeal of talk of Hawk to Haley Welch. She's just like a normal person. That's the appeal. She's Donald Trump in a lot of people's eyes. Right. She's like chill, just kind of like naive, kind of like mm-hmm. learning about the world. She's hot, right? She's okay. Not my type, but you know. But in People like, like a girl next door kind of hot? Yeah, and like a sweet southern, like you're just kind of a cute, like I, I'm just here. I'm darn tootin'. I'm here. I'm here to see my boys. But well, those are the girls boys. that you, you know liked I mean? in Nebraska. No. You I'm said a- on the pod, you said you like what? <laughs> what? No, I love soccer players. That's my type. Oh, Literally yeah. every crush I had, I thought about that. I recently realized this because guy, as a guy who started playing soccer a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, I every crush I had growing up was like a soccer player, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. Love the game. <laughs> Just want to play. Well, they do have uh, sexy bodies. Whoa, okay. Didn't go that far. Some of them do. 
I mean, on average, no, they I do. Think yeah, they they're like yeah. they're all like yeah, they're all just like you're super fit, of course. Yeah, yeah, the fittest. You got people. those long legs. Okay, you're really doing it for me, Art. Keep keep, keep talking, dude. Keep talking, dude. dude. <laughs> Aren't I saw brother. Anora last night? Oh yeah, I did see that. <laughs> I was getting I was getting horned up in the theater, dude. <laughs> I was bricked up at some parts. You, you didn't know it. You were sitting. I was sitting right next. No, to I was you. looking. I was. <laughs> I was feeling. I was like, where is it, <laughs> dude? I dude. The person next to me left. I was like, is he too horny to watch this? That's literally my first. Like, he has to go beat off or something. Like, it's a, it's pretty horny. That's a horny movie. How'd like, you see? Did you cause, see cause things? Right before the movie started, you were like, I heard there's a lot of titties in this movie. And then the opening shot, it's like a sweep, and you see like <laughs> yeah, it's six. Just, Strip pairs, strippers. not six titties, six pairs of titties. Yeah, an ass, a lot of ass. A lot of ass. Yeah, um, the first shot is just lap dances. No, I was excited. I made this joke to you. I was only half kidding. I was like, I'm excited to jack off and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Nah, uh, I did not jack off. I did not jack off at the movie theater. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant when you got home. <laughs> yeah, I got. I, yeah, I slept. Oh, like jacked off at home? Yeah. I did not jack off at home, dude. Oh. <laughs> Well, you're a stronger man than I am. You jacked off at home after? I jacked off in the very home you're sitting in. <laughs> On the train, actually. <laughs> I couldn't wait. <laughs> no, but have you seen Poor Things? Yeah. I think Poor Things was hornier. No. I thought Poor Things was much... I was much hornier throughout Poor Things. You were, Dude, if you were horny throughout Poor Things, you're like a I'm creep. fucked up. <laughs> Why? Emma Stone is so hot. That movie was... she played soccer. That movie was about like... Over sexualization of like a child's brain. Mm. So it, like the point of the movie was to make you feel like not horny and like bad. But she, it was her having sex. It was an adult woman having sex. She was an actor. It she was, didn't. It she was, didn't have sex in like a child. Like she wasn't like, oh, what's this? She was like an adult having sex. You know what I mean? Ch- with a literal child's brain. But she was. But she wasn't <laughs> acting like a child during sex. She was having normal sex. No, she was. The first time she like was figuring it out, and then she event- like, she quickly moved on to like having normal sex, and also just looking. So she's literally like <laughs> figuring out like, like, huh? It feels good when you touch me there. She's literally figuring out how to. Well, have sex. yeah. After she that was part, not like. But huh? then she has regular sex, like a lot of regular sex. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> also, but, it's but just that- Emma Stone. She's hot. <laughs> yeah. And she's good at pretending to have sex. It looked like she was having real sex, but she wasn't being like sexy. Interesting. I like do think that, that movie. Year. That's the sex and poor things was not like sexually charged. It was like I think it was very sexually charged. What? Am I fucked up? Maybe. Yeah, Fuck. I think so. Shit. Delete. It. Delete it. <laughs> <laughs> delete it. We can't release this no, pod. No, no, no. This is, no. But I think a lot of people. I think that's why that movie was so it's a horny movie. Yeah. Because dude, you liked it though, right? Poor yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, really I liked, liked it a lot. lot but I mean, it wasn't the takeaway. My the sex wasn't the takeaway. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean. I have friends who were like disgusted by that movie. Because of its sure. themes, and they they felt like um, like the movie was like exploitive, but I did not think so. I think it was no. making what? a statement on like the exploitation of like young, naive women, girls, sure. not yeah. even young women, like girls. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and like the agency of a woman. Yeah. yeah so like, I, like the people who are outraged, I or people who are angry, I think they were angry at the wrong thing. Right. They were supposed to be angry. But they're now they're angry at the movie, but they're supposed to be angry at what the movie was um, criticizing. Right. Yeah. But I do also think that like to, to go, <laughs> this is a movie podcast now. To go into <laughs> about like her character and agency, yeah. she she does use sex as like a as a liberating thing. You know what I mean? Which is a very mature thing to do. Like throughout the arc of the movie. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's sort of like a fuck you to men who think that they're controlling her with sex, but she actually is controlling them with sex. Eventually. I mean, she eventually, yeah, she eventually, like, comes to that arc. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. Which I think is incredible. If you haven't seen that movie, uh, sorry for spoiling it, she has a lot of sex. But in terms (laughs) of uh, just sexiness, Honora, way sexier than poor things. Crazy. Uh, Well, sexier is different than horny, in my opinion. There's just, there's so much sex in poor things. Like, it's, it's basically a porno. Like, it's like three hours of her having sex. Like, I was surprised by how much sex there were. No way, There's dude. so much There's sex. way more sex than Nora, bro. This is, fast, this is fascinating. Because I've had different, I've had conversations about this with other people as well. And there's, like, disagreement. Of how much sex is in poor things? Yeah, some people agree with me, some people agree with you. As, some people think there's more things, in poor yeah. things, some people think there's more in Nora. <clears throat> which I think is interesting. There's, uh... 
We should we should watch both and and literally time <laughs> <laughs> time all the dude sex like scenes. half half the ending the second half of Anora is there's like no sex in it. Well, I don't want to spoil anything. Okay, all right, that's fair. <laughs> we can move up. We don't have to. I mean, Anora's great. We can talk about Nora. I love Anora. It's great. It's a great movie. You know what? You're starting to <laughs> convince me. <laughs> we'll we'll do a rewatch of both at the same time, <laughs> and we'll time it. There's more sex in Poor Things. I think there's more sex, but, but more like sensuality. Hard to say if it's sexier. I will say no. It, no Anora's that, that's not se- hard to say. Yeah, <laughs> Anora. Okay, okay. I mean, Anora is sexier than Poor Things. Anora is very sexy. It's, a, the, it's the at movie. a strip club. Yeah. Yeah, it's at a strip club. She's she's, she's basically like a, a lap dancer. Yeah. Yeah. She's getting lap dance turned and she's like having sex for money. So right. she's also like an escort. And she's like a professional sexer. She's yeah. having good sex. Right. Right. But like the thing is like an, uh, poor things was like uh Emma Stone was having sex with men. You yeah, know, and some women. A lot, frivolously. Yeah. But like Anora was like having sex with men One. but also like dancing and like she like Open her legs and like stuff. slap their pussy at one point. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Literally, this. Yeah, just it's pretty pretty sexual. Destroys poor things in terms of sexuality. When yeah, she maybe. slapped her pussy, that like ends the <laughs> argument. Maybe I don't know if it's hornier. Huh? I think poor things is still hornier. It's then just, uh, Nora slapping her pussy. Yeah. No way. I think that, that it was also such a quick moment. Not to spoil it too much. Right. The underwear was on. <laughs> <laughs> the underwear was, was on. I <laughs> uh, highly recommend Nora. Yeah, Nora's great. Such a good movie. Would you recommend Poor Things? Yeah, I would re- recommend both. Both, yeah. Look Do at those it, yeah. Fem- two feminist guys. Bang, bang. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Watch both, and you'll be so fucking horned up. You'll be bricked You'll up. be ordering many escorts. <laughs> <laughs> Men or women? <laughs> <laughs> they, them, any sort of escort. Um. Yeah, 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 yeah. It did. I did. I did wonder. Like, I have never had a VIP strip club experience. I was like, I wonder if I like it. Have you ever been to a strip club? I've been to a strip club. I've had. Oh. I've had a lap dance. Oh yeah. But I didn't really. It felt weird in that moment. But I was like, what if I had the VIP experience where I'm like in a private room getting a lap dance? You know what I mean? They're also having sex in there. Right. Yeah. So, but sometimes they're just having exclusive lap dances where it's just like you're just you and the lap dancer, right? Mm-hmm. Like they showed that in the movie where it's just like sometimes they don't even have sex. They just lap dance. I'm like, would I like that? I don't know. I think you would. Really? I mean, if you're, be, if you're getting so emotional on the train, imagine what <laughs> a woman... A lap like, dance. ...convincing you that she, like, loves you. But I don't know if she can convince me. That's the issue. You have to suspend disbelief. I don't know if that's, that's where I'm like, I don't think I can. You don't think you can do that? If I had money in my hands, I don't think I could. This is, like, a tr- this is a transaction for me. You know what I mean? Unless right. I'm, like... I need to get my... If I'm, like, having sex, maybe I can convince myself, like, I just need to, like, nut. You know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, if I'm being honest, I don't really think that they care about me or, like, uh, (laughs) or love me or anything. But, like, it's... The transaction... You know what it is? I think I'm having a breakthrough right now for myself. (laughs) Okay. I think the the transaction allows me to let go of the fear that, like, I... The... The connection is gonna stop, or, like be fucked up. You know what I mean? Oh, because like if yeah, I'm yeah. if I'm like uh, with a girl, like let's say like we're talking or flirting or whatever. If I say something wrong, right? There's anxiety. Then I, it can, I it's out of my control. I, it's, right, right, right. I end it. But if like if she's being paid, you know, like I I am insured. Yeah. That I'm gonna that she's gonna love me. Right. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. Like I don't think I can pay for that. Like right. I don't know. Like love for me is more than a transaction. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's easier for for me to like let my guard down. Okay. Yeah. You feel more liberated in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating. For like the next two and a half minutes, yeah. however long See, this song is. I guess I, part I of me guard down. likes that sort of anxiety of like maybe this will go bad. But that's part of me is like that is part of love. I'm too insecure. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And then you can let go of your insecurities. But again, I think I think the idea of like having sex just to like nut and get it over with. That's cool with me. I can do that, I think. I can definitely do that. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, here's yeah. money. Like, I just need to, like, have sex, and we're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't want to, like... A lap dance is different, though. That's, like, they're spending time. They're, like, all over you, and I I, I, I don't know. I feel like it'd be kind of weird. You're whispering in your ear. I like saying shit to me. Well, like, the last time I got a lap dance was in college, and I was like... I literally told her, like, this is kind of weird. Who was he? 
<laughs> Classic joke. Classic. Classic joke. Um, it was my professor. No, uh, <laughs> no. She was like, she was like, I told her I was like, this is kind of weird. She's like, yeah, it's like, don't worry about it. You know, like you said that. And it was kind of weird. Yeah, I was in college. Too. I didn't know what was going on. My first lap dance. Also, they f- you didn't know what a lap dance was. Well, no, no, no. You my, knew not. To, you knew not no, no, no. to say here's that. More con- here's more context. Here's more context. Yeah. My fraternity brothers forced me to have one. They're like, here's here's money. We already bought you it. Go. Uh huh. And I was like, I don't. All right, I'll go. And I was just like, man, this is kind of strange. Right? I never had this. Never this never happened to me before. I never. I did literally told her I've never done this before. Right. And she's like, don't worry about it. It's like it's chill. Like, uh, I'm just gonna dance on you, and like it could be whatever. Like, uh, and she's like just telling me about it. And then then she goes into her life story. <laughs> she started telling you her story. Yeah. She's like, you know, like she's like, oh, you in college? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like. And she's like, oh yeah, like you guys come, you guys come to the strip club every year. I remember you guys. And, she, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, also like you know, my kids in college. I'm like, okay. Oh no. Okay. I'm like, oh cool. Like, oh no. What is your? Did they pick the girl. I'm I sorry, not girl. Sorry to offend. Woman, grown ass <laughs> woman. Uh, I mean, she could have been like an 18 year old mom. So I don't know. Like, it's, she, she was a woman. She's she, like an old old lady, older lady. So she she had to be like in her 30s. I don't know. She's it was dark. And that's 2030s. It was like 2030s, yeah. right? Dude, her kid was in college. Something like that. She's like, you know, my kid wants like nursing or something. She's like saying all this shit. I'm like, oh, cool, that's awesome. Now she's like sitting there trying to like make conversation. Nursing, something like that. Yo, this know. woman is old. Bro. <laughs> you got a lap dance from the fucking manager. I mean, she could have. She could have been 30 and had a kid young. Right. Bro, the the her kid was in nursing school. I don't know. Maybe she I'm, had a full on, <laughs> maybe an old front lady. line <laughs> worker, front line <laughs> hero as a child. I could be re- misremembering this. I'm not sure, but wow. this is what I remember. Your <laughs> kid was studying nursing, or maybe she was the nurse. I don't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt she was the nurse. She could have a date, but one day way job. or another, if she was, <laughs> one way or another, she was a hero. Yeah, it was yeah. my first lap dance. I did not get hard. Uh, it was very. It was, I just felt very strange. It was a very strange moment because we were in the middle of nowhere too. We were in Biloxi, yeah. Mississippi, and I was like. Have I ever told you the story that we went to a strip club? I don't think so. So, okay, this is how it happened. We were kidnapped. We were pledge napped, as they say. We were pledges. And every now and then we get a text like, hey, we have to show up to the house right now. Drop everything you're doing. Go to the house right now. So we go to the house. They put blindfolds on us. We, they usher us into a car. And the next thing you know, we're like in, we're driving and we're chatting with the brothers, blindfolded, two hour drive. We, we, end, wow. up, we end up in Biloxi, Mississippi. We're at like a motel. And then they take our blindfolds off and they're like, all right, guys, we're going to the strip club. Get in the car. And we all get in the car and we're like, I guess we're going to the strip club. And we just, they just drive us to the strip club and they make us, they make us hang out at the strip club <laughs> in Biloxi, Mississippi. What was the <laughs> blindfold for? To not know where, we're, where you're going, to like, to get your senses out and like to disorient you. All right. And then they just went to the strip club? We just went to the strip club. What else did we do that weekend? Uh, I think we slept in the motel. I think I shared a bed with like four other dudes. They're all bricked up from the. Strip <laughs> they club. they made them drink a lot. I didn't. I don't think I drank that much during that uh, trip. But they drank a lot. Uh, I think we had to kill a keg in a motel. Uh, I think we went to a bar. Uh, we went to the strip club. I think we went to like Hooters or Waffle House or something. Oh, we definitely went to Waffle House. I remember that. That was fun. Like that's where you got that lap dance. Got a lap dance at the Waffle House, <laughs> and then I fought her. <laughs> she fought me. <laughs> I was like, "This is weird." She pumped me. Uh, she threw a chair at me. Um, yeah, so that, that's what. Ha- that's why I was so like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> this is crazy, man. So that was that was a pledge story, <laughs> and that was the only time you've been to a strip club. No, I went to a few times after in New Orleans. Oh, okay, but I didn't like oh, New Orleans. I didn't partake in the strip club stuff. I like sat in the back. I didn't drink. And my friends were like getting dances and stuff. Not private dances, but it was like all in the main room. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to those. <clears throat> One of the last uh, times I went to a strip club was, uh, it was, I think, the night before I left Texas. Okay. <clears throat> um, I went with uh, a couple of friends and then um, uh, my mom's cousins. And my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And He's scouting out who to it marry. It was uncoordinated because I had my goodbye party. And then me and my friends were like, you know, you want to go to strip club? I was like, sure. And then I said bye to my dad. And my dad was like, what are you guys doing later? We're going to go to the titty bar. <laughs> and then we're like, well, why don't we all just go to the same one? So we all went to the same one. This is crazy. And then uh, people were buying me lap dances. Yeah. Um, and then my dad bought me a lap dance. And then I That's was going to buy so him a lap funny. dance. And then my dad was like, no, 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 you can't, not in front of your mom's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
And Wait till next week's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, wait, I so when you got a lap I got dance, so many that after like two or three, I like you got I kind of had enough. I was like, so, all right. Wait, I'll... wait. So when you get a lap dance, mm-hmm. is it in the main room or do they take you VIP? They took me to like a separate area. Was it's it kind like, of a dead night too? Was it like the movie where it's like you're like lined up? There's a small curtain between everybody, or is it like literally in like a separate room? I think it depends on like the how the club is set up. But, but what happened to you? Were you that were night? You taken? There was they brought me to like another room, and Whoa. it wasn't like one on one. Oh, other people there, were there. It was like an open area. Yeah, but yeah, nobody yeah. else was in the dead end. night because it, it was a dead night. Nobody else. Ah, was in there. okay. And then they had that's like, what happened to me when I got my. They dance, had yeah. like these couches that were sort of like. Uh, Semi-circle shape? Yeah, like a U-shape. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, got my got my little dances. So, did you, did you, did you talk to these? And wonderful girls. Did you t- <laughs> I miss them every day. <laughs> One day they'll Bro, be Bro, actually bringing it up. Dude. <laughs> so, the girl. I love these moments of revelation on the spot. <laughs> it's just so, like, um, you unlock something yourself. Yeah. The girl who was, like, dancing so on funny. me. So funny. Her name was, uh, oh, man. I'm going to change up the names. Okay. <laughs> as, uh, if, as if you're, people are going to find them? Yeah, You'll see why at the end of this Okay. Story. Okay. So this girl, well, her stripper name, we'll call her Atlantic. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll call her Atlantis because that sounds like more of a stripper yeah, yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, Her Atlantis was like, she was giving me lab dances and then she was just kind of hanging out. Yeah. And she was cool. And yeah. she was like gorgeous, you know, but and like we... Eventually, it was dead, so just she just kind of like lounged with us, okay. and shot the shit, yeah. and like you know got us drinks, and was just chilling. Right, that's really fun. Yeah, you know when you get just, just chill with the shippers. <laughs> okay, that, I never I've never done that, but okay. That's like that's like the, the best, best part. part when wow. you when you can go and really vibe with them. Talking about the pillow talk, damn. No, like that the couch talk. Honestly, that's my favorite part. <laughs> okay, it's just chilling with them, and every Chatting. once in a while, you like you know like you'll get a little lap dance, and then you just hang out some more. Yeah. It's a fun hang. But anyways, <laughs> okay. so Atlantis, uh, she, she's cool as fuck. You know, yeah. we tell her that I'm moving, tell her to do comedy. She's like, oh, I'll come out to one of your shows. Da, da, da. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then, like, I think, you know, we kind of became friends and, like, Whoa. exchanged Instagrams and stuff. Oh, shit. And, she ignored uh, your ass. Huh? <laughs> she ignored your ass. Almost. She tried. <laughs> but, uh. You know the Prince of Vietnam or the Philippines? <laughs> so the after hell? that, a couple months later, I find out from my friend who was there that um, Atlantis uh, was kidnapped by her <gasps> boyfriend. Oh, fuck. And was missing for a few days. Yo. And they found her dead <gasps> in the trunk of oh, his car. Jesus Christ. This is, that's crazy. Yeah. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Did she ever make it out to a show? <laughs> no, unfortunately, Damn. she never got the pleasure. <laughs> yeah. I never got to return the favor. That could have saved her. <laughs> she would have dated you instead. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. It's a dangerous life. Yeah, honestly, I think that's very common for like a sex worker to just straight up die. It's dangerous, man. I have a lot of empathy for those girls. No, yeah, I feel like we should destigmatize the whole life. We should destigmatize uh, killing shippers. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's pretty. <laughs> no, we should keep that segment. Oh, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We sorry, should sorry, keep sorry, that segment. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Stigmatize that. <laughs> yeah, keep that. Sig- yeah, don't kill anybody, actually. That wasn't a bit. I, that was literally a Freudian slip. <laughs> you want to kill her. <laughs> Got your wish, buddy. <laughs> I, I meant to say something completely different. And I didn't realize boyfriend? what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you revealing something? Is that why you wanted to cover her name up? <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, man. Isn't that crazy? It's actually really sad. I feel like it's very, also, again, very common. One time I went to, I think the last strip club that I went to was in Boston. Oh. And um, my roommate Josh was there. Hey. And like. We're sitting literally club, across from his room right now. This club sucked. Like yeah. the stage was, uh, it was really far away. Sure. So you couldn't like rain money. Yeah. Rain cash on the stage. Yeah. So I had to like crumple up my just, dollar like, bill fucking, and like peg her. <laughs> like ping pong, like ping. beer pong. <laughs> yeah. Which felt incredibly disrespectful. <laughs> like seeing yeah. the crumpled dollar bill just bounce off of her thigh. You're like stoning <laughs> felt her. felt really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, damn. It felt. And yeah. they deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be seen where I'm from. Mm-hmm. It's like bouncing off her forehead. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that that didn't feel good. But then she did wow. this thing. She tried to, um, she tried, she crawled up to us, and I had a <laughs> had a beer bottle on the stage. Okay. And then she was like, "You want to see a trick?" I was like, "Not really." And anyway, she Ooh. took my beer bottle, and then she like 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep yeah, throats yeah. the neck of the bottle. Nice. And then puts it back in front of me. The beer was like three quarters full. <laughs> And it was like eighteen dollars. You're like, oh, God. something crazy expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you ruined my beer. You owe me money. money now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> she thought she did. She was like, she like took it out of her mouth and she was being all sexy. Like, right. Like, you yeah, know what's cra- I killed that. People. And she did like that sexy walk back to the pole. You know where her like the the heel the butt's crosses. The butt's moving. Yeah, yeah. And I was like angry. I was like, what the fuck was that? Works that? on that works on dudes though. People love that shit. I don't like that. I just like when well, they chill. Well, you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. When they uh, open it with a beer bottle opener. Just do regular stuff with beer bottles. If you want Drink to, out it, of it. Look, if you are a uh, exotic dancer and you just want to bleed me dry of the little money that I have. <laughs> just hang out. <laughs> all you have to do is just pretend to be my friend. Just be normal. For a few minutes. <laughs> like, Damn. Uh, I'm, su- I'm a sucker. Dude, you would love therapy. That's literally what a therapist does. It's your friend for an hour. It's like your best friend for an hour. Yeah, but I need him to give me a little a Yeah, little a little dance. More, a little <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, Can we do this over Zoom? I'm like, no, you have to be here. Yeah. Baby needs some skin on Baby skin. Baby needs some skin. Oh, you're skin hungry. Oh, Fascinating. Dude. You know what? Speaking of like getting emotional, I got a little emotional during a lap dance once. Are you serious? I yeah. think you told me this, but this is tell it again. Because she I was gonna lap dance and then she like that's, uh, that's, this is amazing. She got pressing my face into her chest which i usually i don't like oh interesting because like um it's not like big old anime titties. you can't breathe already <laughs> like there's there's bone between yeah, yeah, the yeah. breast the sternum the breast bone you know? for sure and you're just pressing my face into your chest bone you go <laughs> but anyways she was doing that yeah. and like uh i it made me realize like man when was the last time i had a hug <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not gonna lie I te- I teared up a little. Oh my bit. god! I teared up a little bit. This is you in high school and college. This was uh, probably end of college, post college. You didn't hug a lot of people. Did you hug a lot of people growing up? Like were you guys hu- were your no, friends huggers? No, no. Whoa! Not we, even my family's not even huggers. So my family's not huggers. No, not even my friends. But my my friends are big. We're big huggers growing up. We when we left, we all had to hug each other. Nah, well, that's why we're so different. I, so I mean, I guess now, but like. Uh, back then, no. Yeah, I was, wow, so you I was had skin that. hunger. That's yeah. fascinating. I was like, dude. skin thirsty, dude. Yeah. Don't worry. I, That's why I, boys I, play sports. That's why you're so into fighting. <laughs> you want those fists in your face. Like, Let me feel that. Let me feel that. You think that's what's going on? Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, that's what the, uh, that's a theory. <laughs> There's skin hunger. Oh. I think there's also innately people like competition. But it's man. fun to watch competition. It's drama. You but know? yeah, like I legit uh, miss my mommy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give her a hug sometime, you know? One day your dad will miss her too. <laughs> when he he's finally in his, when he's leaves in her. his house in Vietnam. Yeah. That's Are you checking the time? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a couple stories from the weekend. Oh, yeah. Hit me. Give me uh, a good one. So, so I had a. So this weekend I was with Ronnie Chang. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Shout out, friend of the pod. We'll get him on one of day. The pod. Keeps Lu- dodging you know, my emails. Lucky enough to, you know, uh, <laughs> Leech off of his career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when am I going to get my own, right, Dad? No. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we went to uh, Baltimore, and mm-hmm. then we went to Charlottesville, Virginia. Charlottesville, famous mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for, you know, the tiki torches. Their cuisine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. And uh, great time. Great time. But both nights, weird Uber drivers. Oh, you guys got Ubers. Yeah. Couldn't rent a car. Cheapskate. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, like uh, the 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 first night we from the hotel to the uh, venue, yeah. I rode with uh, Ronnie and his wife. Okay, and uh, we got like this uh, older Indian guy in Baltimore. Okay, and he's driving us to the venue. Now, uh, Ronnie has to enter through the back, obviously. Like, okay, there's a special stage door. Right, right, right. And it's <clears throat> marked in the Uber app. Yeah, like the Uber app is directing him directly to the stage oh, door. Oh, man. Right? I see where this is going, yeah. And so this guy, I guess he's he's like one of those old school like cab drivers who doesn't need the GPS. So he like, knows where everything is, he yeah. He knows where everything is, right? So he, t- he drives us to the venue. Oh, shit. And then he's like, all right, we're here. We're here at the <laughs> venue. We're here at the theater. The yeah, show. yeah, yeah. And then we're like, oh, no, I'm sorry. We have to, There's actually like a stage door that we have yeah. to get to. And he's like, what? What is stage door? I don't know stage door. 
I drive 25 years. I don't know stage door. <laughs> oh, my God. And then we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a special door. You just have to go like around here. And he's like, no, 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 no. Nobody told me nothing about no stage door. No, 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 no. And so he just starts driving off. We're all still in the car. He's just driving in circles and stuff. And you're like, no, take us to the fucking door. Yeah, he's like confused. And then like. Uh, Wait, this is hilarious. He's like arguing with us back and forth. He's yeah. like, nobody told me nothing about no okay. stage door. This accent's insane. And then, <laughs> and then dude, he takes us like down the street. I guess there's like another movie theater or something. Oh. Uh, and, and he goes, look at that. that, that is that the theater? And we're like, yeah, I guess. He goes, there's good shows there. You go there. Whoa. Uh, What's the show here? And we're like, you can't just take us. You don't understand. We're like yeah. on, we're the sh- we're the show. The show. Did you, were like, you explaining that to him? We were like, he's famous. He's on TV. We, I didn't want to. We didn't. I don't think any of us wanted to get into that. He also, like, uh, he also probably wouldn't care. <laughs> he probably, yeah. you're lying, you idiots. Right. So like, also goes to show, Ronnie Chang, not that famous. Probably could have used the main entrance. It would have been fine if, <laughs> if that Uber driver didn't know him. He's fine, <laughs> dude. Uber drivers and Indians are <laughs> Asian. We are Asian. <laughs> yeah. So everybody he knows. knows his bits. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, and so. Uh, it was him retaliating. Yeah. Eventually, I get it. like Ronnie and Hannah, you know, they're pros. So like, they were very, they were extremely nice to the guy. Right, professional. And we're able to like guide him to where he needed to go. Right, and, right, right. And then as soon as like Dude, the guy saw the stage door, the guy immediately just switched 180. It was like, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I okay. He just spiraled, and he's like. I really regret <laughs> how I re- my reaction. I'm so sorry. I well, he probably realized he was a famous person. He's like, he's going. Oh, this is the actor. Maybe, maybe I mean, that. That's, but he's like, oh fuck. I, I don't think this guy cares about any of that. Like, I, I mean, know, if, if, you know, if Ronnie was in Bollywood, then maybe it'd be a different <laughs> story. If he was Russell Peters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, did you know he's in Sorry? But he like completely flipped his tone. He's like, I am so sorry. Yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. driver for twenty five years. I don't, I've never been here. Yeah, probably just learned something new. He's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. yeah. And Ronnie was like, it's cool, man. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. But One so that, star. <laughs> that was the first. That was the first uh, Uber experience. Blunder. Pretty, pretty big blunder. Pretty big blunder. And the set, so and we're just sitting there being like, oh man, this is awkward. <laughs> I I tried to help. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just made it worse. And like the Uber You're like, driver, Ronnie, kept, I got this. I, yeah, <laughs> the Uber driver, kept, he kept trying to defer to me. Oh, Cause it, cause interesting. It kind of became him versus Ronnie. Right, right. Because right. Ronnie was like. Uh, like trying to direct him and the Uber driver wouldn't sure. hear it. And this then Ronnie so was like, there was one part where it was like, Ronnie was like, he tried to point yeah. on the Uber driver's phone, like right. where to go. And the Uber driver was like, straight up was like, don't touch my phone. Don't touch, don't touch my phone. <laughs> this is so, it's, it's fascinating hearing stories of Ronnie because I, I only have a conception of him on TV as TV Ronnie. So seeing, like hearing him being like a normal human being is very interesting to me. Ronnie's like beyond normal. He's like, yeah, he seems so normal. He's like incredibly like, but all he talks about is generous, emails. <laughs> like with like, he's like incredibly um, polite. Sure. You know, he seems like it. Seems like a very chill dude. Yeah. 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 That's funny that, uh, he was just like, yeah, you can't touch my phone. Like, what are you talking about? I know this place. He probably doesn't. He probably doesn't. He probably resents his phone. Probably wishes he never had a phone. You know the, what I mean? The first time I ever met Ronnie was in uh, Houston, and uh, you can't tell. Like, the first his first tour was called like the Tone Issues Tour. Oh, because his tone is always angry. Yeah, but he, yeah That's yeah. not how he feels. Right. I mean, so I remember he was like going back and forth with like the sound guy trying to right. adjust the monitor, and the sound guys at that. Uh, where were we? I forgot what venue it was. But they were just being completely unprofessional. Sure. And we're not, like, um, helping him at all, like, not working with him. Right. And they're like, I don't know, man. It's not usually my job, so I can't, like, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> Jesus and Christ. And Ronnie's like, no, just turn it up a little bit. Just turn it up yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they won't do it. And I'm oh watching all God. this. And then, so we get to the green room. And I think, like, the first thing I ever said to Ronnie was, like, this yeah. guy's fucking assholes, huh? Yeah, yeah. And Ronnie's like, no, they're just doing their job. Yeah. They just, <laughs> he's just very understanding. Yeah, he was like, no, you know, they have a hard job. Dude, I just... When you when you when people talk about like stories like this where like it's people usually celebrities actors or whatever trying to do something yeah and they they you kind of realize actually how hard it is to do things sometimes because people just don't want to do their jobs or whatever oh yeah and you start realizing oh it kind of makes sense that sometimes actors have to be assholes to get shit done sure you're like do this now or else because you're wasting our time everyone's time if you don't do this you yeah I mean? I guess, like, they gotta like, add urgency you gotta be assertive but not right aggressive, right right, right. exactly so uh, yeah Ryan's a cool guy um <laughs> 
<laughs> please keep booking me, Uncle Lonnie, please. <laughs> and then Do you think he's uh, one of the listeners? Has he listened to this pod? I know he knows I have a podcast. Okay. Because he was like, oh, what do you want to do with your <laughs> career? He's like your dad. And I was like, I don't know. He goes, he's like, <laughs> he's comedy like, dad. He's like, what are you doing outside of stand up? I was like, well, I got a podcast. He goes, but that's not what you really want to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got a podcast. He goes, I, I know, he goes, I know, but that's not. <laughs> so he knows. I'm mean, right. have seen a clip or something. Here's the thing about this podcast, guys. Here's the thing. All right. Yeah. I like doing the pod. It it's it's a fun thing. But yeah, it's not the goal to be like a, a famous podcaster. I thought about this earlier today. I I thought about this the way I think about this pod the way that my girlfriend probably thinks about me. <laughs> He's okay. like, if this is our future, I'd be pretty happy with it. You're podding? Yeah, well, yeah, I think it'd be, content. it'd be sick to like start a Patreon and make like actual money, like monthly from the, and that's like how we make most of our money, and then we can just do stand up. You know yeah. what I mean? That'd yeah, be yeah, sick, yeah. right? To do basically whatever what other comedian does is make money off podcasts. It'd be awesome. So we're investing in our future, Ronnie. Yeah. If you're listening, what the fuck do you know? Nothing, dude. <laughs> you don't have a podcast. <laughs> We'd love to have you on. Please come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess we get we get end on this this story. This it's second Uber driver. Damn. Yeah. In Charlottesville. Uh huh. And um, so I'm in Charlottesville. What's, what's up with Charlottesville? A dude? town it's starting to make me racist. <laughs> <laughs> dude, beautiful, beautiful town. Oh, I bet. It's, yeah, I bet it's lovely. Especially in the fall. Yeah. Like uh, I could see what they were so territorial about. <laughs> we got to protect this beautiful garden of ours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I will say um, we did ask a lot of the locals about yeah. like the TV the torch riot. Yeah. You know, and they were, none of those guys were from Charlottesville. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they're all from like surrounding areas. Yeah. Who like came in? Yeah. Right. Um, that another migrant caravan for people to worry <laughs> about. Um, the wrong kind of migrants, more like ter- <laughs> uh, domestic terrorists. Domestic terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, uh, again, I order an Uber to get to the venue. This yeah. time I'm just by myself. Okay. And uh, white uh, Ford F-150 pulls up. Music Sick. blasting. <laughs> All that. the way Hate up. Hate that shit. Windows are up. I can hear it from outside. Ugh. It's blasting. You're like, oh, fuck. I get in. Old, old black guy. Okay, okay. Right? And then, uh, he, you know, he drives off. It's a vibe, you know. <laughs> and then like five minutes later. What's he playing? Jackson Five, um, <laughs> Motown, <laughs> kind of along the lines of that. Actually. Are you serious? Yeah, I think I think you got it right. That's so yeah, yeah. funny. And so uh, it, it was it was a Jackson Five song actually. That's so funny. No, it was a Pyt, not Jackson Five. It was Pyt. That's Jackson Five. Oh no, that's, well, that's, ba- that's Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, we're Bring driving up. So like five minutes into the drive, he turned. He uh, he got, he's he starts making conversation. And he's like, uh, "You working hard tonight?" I say, yeah, yeah, but, you know, it's fun. I enjoy it. He goes, all right, good, good, good. And then he turns down the radio all the way down. Okay. He goes, so you don't remember me? <laughs> oh, no. And I go, what? He goes, you don't remember me for real. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, man. I've been in Charlottesville for like four hours. There's literally 0% chance that we've met. <laughs> I know for a fact we actually have never met. I haven't talked to a single person here. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I'm like, there's no way. I don't, There's no way that you know me. That's so funny. And then so he turns around, he he understands that he's made a mistake and has mistaken me for somebody else. Okay. He goes, you know, you all look the same. No. <laughs> and turns the radio back up. <laughs> yeah. And I go, Doesn't even give you a rebuttal. And then I tell him, I go, I'm going to remember you now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. That's a good response. <laughs> yeah, and then we both laughed about it. Yeah, he's like, "Me too, brother." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, um, I was like, are you sure you know him? <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, because we had a good laugh. Yeah, like he got the sense that we were like friends. And bro, he started wild. Oh now. shit! What did he like, say? Well, as he got closer to the venue, it's like in the downtown mall. The yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, man, this it's place like, it gets popping at night, man. This. <laughs> The girls will be out tonight, man. <laughs> okay. A lot of fine girls are out tonight. <laughs> Let's go. And they're going to be out late. Uber Uber drivers love saying weird shit about women to me. I don't know about you, but it's like it's always something weird about women. Oh, really? They really yeah. open up to you? Yes. I don't know why. Yeah. Shh, I don't want to talk. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> I feel like I do that to you on this podcast. No, no. <laughs> I, time. I know you. I don't know these Uber drivers. <laughs> <laughs> the girls are out tonight, brother, if you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, oh my God. say something in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, say something in Chinese. <laughs> you don't remember me, brother? <laughs> You're Ronnie Chang, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe you're Ronnie, was, Chang. you're Ronnie Chang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Or maybe you're Russell Peters. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to the stage door. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Come on, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to get a little offensive. The, the more the more we do his accent, <laughs> the more offensive. Come on, Ronnie. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Ronnie. Don't do that. Stop saying that to me. <laughs> you're going to get me canceled. <laughs> okay, there we go. You're going to send me back to Malaysia and have me canceled. Come on, Ronnie. You know what they do in Malaysia? They kill people like us. <laughs> Come on, Lee. Come on, Lee. Come on. <laughs> This is crazy. <laughs> this is this is crazy. <laughs> Say goodbye to SNL. <laughs> there it goes, baby. <laughs> All right, man. I think I think we should cut me off for today. No, nah, I think we need more. <laughs> that's for the Patreon. That's where all the slurs come out. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Uh, I do I do want to meet Ronnie. I think he and I'd actually get along. I feel like the more I hear about him, I'm like, I actually fuck with this guy. He seems chill as hell. He really probably. But the coolest person along. I've ever met. Cool. Well, I'm offended now. I thought I was the coolest person you ever met, but uh, I'm, I got two, not. brother. Tight two. <laughs> I'm number two. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that makes sense. Um, all right, I guess we can end now. I want to talk more about strip clubs. I have so many questions. We'll do another one with uh, Josh because uh, we both have a lot of strip, strip club, club stories, stories and a lot of them together. That's so funny. All right. Well, you want to sign us up? You want me to do it? I guess I'll do it. You feel weird about it, right? Shamal, <laughs> on. Sign us off. See ya!